slew of retail earnings this week, and they've given investors an inside look at just how stretched the consumer is feeling. So which are the retail names you can safely buy now, like Gap, I suppose, and which should you be sure to avoid? Let's find out in today's Three Buys in a Bail Retail Edition. Here with our trades is Victoria Green. She's Chief Investment Officer at G-Squared Private Wealth and a CNBC contributor. Victoria, it's great to have you. Your first buy is Walmart, um, which was consensus until, you know, yesterday. Uh, the shares are pretty flat today <laughs> after that 8% drop on their cautious consumer outlook. They did beat on the top and bottom lines, strong grocery and e-commerce driving that. So you say stick with it? Absolutely. They were the only retailer really punished for, for saying what everybody else said, which was, hey, we're worried our consumers slowing down. And everybody else, even Target, seemed to be saying, hey, we can lower sales, slow, have less traffic, have slower sales. And they got rewarded up 20 percent. Walmart grew their sales, grew traffic, and they were punished 8 percent. It just doesn't make sense to me. Quality company. They lean into grocery. They saw e-commerce uh, expand. That added about 300 bips to their bottom line. And I think if you are seeing the value conscious consumer, Walmart's the place you want to be. All right. You want to be in Walmart. You also like Ross stores. They just reported the off-price retailer, and they did top street estimates on both the top and bottom lines yesterday. They had robust demand at discount outlets. Uh, they had easing freight costs heading into the holiday shopping season, and the shares are up 8 percent right now. Yeah, we're also definitely one that I would hold or buy because, uh, again, it's about the value they're providing their customers and their ability to grow their top line. They expanded margins. They grew EPS. They still have a very conservative guidance and outlook. And it actually seemed, if you read through management commentary, they're saying, hey, we're going to keep that guidance 1% to 2% sales growth for Q4. But if they do what they did in Q3, that could be up 5%. And their EPS growth, regardless, they range it from 1.52 to 1.61. That's still about 20, 30 cents growth over what they saw on Q3. I like a company that's growing. And again, it's value oriented. They saw a little bit lower ticket uh, prices, but people were putting more items in the basket. So we're seeing their consumer look to them for value. And so if you're squeezed again and you're looking for clothing, you might be looking more to Ross than you would to say Target or TJ Maxx. All right. Your third buy is everyone's favorite. So, you know, I've, I've got to find some holes to poke in this story, even as I have another order on its way uh, to my house right now. Costco, <laughs> uh, they don't report Q1 until mid-December, but they did hit a new 52-week earlier this week, even as Walmart was down uh, at Amazon, too. And their competitor, BJ's, reported this morning it was a beat on both the top and bottom line, thanks to membership, traffic, and market share growth in Q3. It has to come from somewhere. Um, what, do you, what do you think about Costco? Definite buy? Excited buy? Excited by. Okay, I do have to like full disclaimer, I am also a Costco lover and a Costco member, but they just have a cult following and they have 130 members and they are cracking down on those members. I don't know if you've been there recently or not, but they're actually checking the picture on the card. Mm -hmm. That could drive further and further membership gains, which is a, a solid out to their bottom line, about $4.2 billion a year in membership revenues and their store traffic has continued to grow. I think again, on the value theme, if you're seeing shoppers uh, load up for the holidays, buying food, buying wine, They've got great grocery selections. You're going to see more and more traffic go there. And that would be potentially pulling from, say, a Target or a Kroger as you're looking for those value deals at Costco, those bulk deals to feed your family over the holidays. Yes, October sales were a little bit slower. I think their same source sales and traffic was about up only about 2% versus the 4 to 5% they've been doing earlier this year. But I think they can still have same store sales growth and justify their premium multiple. Absolutely. I always thought it would be a cool thing to do as a household, Victoria. We, we can't buy single stocks. We've sold another one. You could buy everything that you pay for in real life and just recycle the cash flows back to yourself, right? So you'd Maybe you'd buy Costco, maybe you'd buy, I don't know, Exxon, maybe you'd buy, you know, it, it, it just then it goes in, it goes out of one hand and then it comes back in the other. <laughs> That's a good way to justify our spending. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. All right. Let's uh, those all three were your buys. You do have a name that you'd bail on, though, and it's actually Home Depot. The shares are up five percent after they reported strong Q3 results this week. But much like Walmart and Target, they did have that weak outlook. A lot of people have been wanting to stick with this for the long run, though, but not you. Why? No, and no participation trophy. Their earnings were not that great in Q3 at all. They saw a drop in EPS, a drop in sales. They're seeing pro slow down. Their pro backlog is, is lower and slower than it used to be. They're seeing less of big ticket items, even flooring and cabinets. They're not selling as much. They're warning. People got excited because we said, hey, EPS is only going to fall potentially 3 to 4% versus the range of 2, 2 to 5%. I am not buying the fact on this 11% bounce that is worth that because 
because they're still seeing slowing sales, slowing growth. And again, they are freely admitting the macro, especially on the home improvement market and its share of the consumer spend. So let's say consumer spend goes down, but then you're also going to potentially see the, the home improvement market get a smaller percentage of that consumer spend. Just a really hard stop for me to justify right now. Yeah. And I feel like investors are like, oh, it wasn't that horrible. It wasn't that great. And you gave them a nice 11 percent bop. Absolutely sell it. <laughs> well, I think it's emblem. You know, this one feels to me like it's in the middle of a big tug of war right now as people try to figure out what, you know, and, and it's year to date performance suggests that as well. It's almost unchanged down about 3 uh, percent. I like your bold, though, going out against it. Victoria, thanks for your time today. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Victoria guys. Victoria Green of G Squared Private Wealth.